All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to Creating Cashflow, where today we are gonna be diving into five Vanguard index funds that I have invested in over the years, and we're gonna look at how they have been performing, why I invested in them, and at the very end, I wanna be able to give you a little secret on what I would have done differently had I had the knowledge I have now. So if you're new to this channel, I am Dallin, and I am not a personal finance guru or anything like that. I simply share my research and learnings as I go about navigating this financial world we live in, and I hope that you can learn something from it or provide me with knowledge that you have that can fill in some of my gaps. Now, if you're cool with that and wanna stick around, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Hopefully we can all learn together. And if you're not new to the channel, thank you so much for coming back. I hope you find this video helpful. Okay, so the first Vanguard fund that we're gonna talk about today is VFIAX, which has a minimum investment of $3,000, a pretty low expense ratio of 0.04%. And on the risk to reward scale, it's showing as a four. So if we come down here to weighted exposures, we see that information technology is 27.3%, healthcare is 14.3%, and consumer discretionary is 10.7%. So what that looks like uh, based on the top 10 holdings is probably what you would expect. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Google, ExxonMobil, these are their top 10 holdings. And over the past five years, they are up 54%, which is awesome, especially everyone now watching this channel knows that we are investing for the long term. So think about your investments as five, 10, 15 years down the road. Uh, but also, year to date, even amongst the turmoil of the year so far, they're up 7.41%, which is really, really solid. The next fund we're going to be looking at is VIGAX, which is the Vanguard Growth Index Fund. And this one also has a minimum investment of $3,000, a pretty low expense ratio of 0.05. And again, you're seeing the risk to reward scale of a four. So as we look at the weighted exposures here, this is very heavily weighted towards technology. So 46.4% of this is invested in tech and 23.1% is, is invested in consumer discretionary. Then you'll see industrials and healthcare is next. So with technology and SVB, everything has been looking really, really down in the tech world right now. There's been hundreds of thousands of layoffs. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to be performing over the near future. But before we look at that, let's look at the top 10 holdings. So as you probably expected, we're gonna be seeing Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, and Google as some of their top 10 holdings, which with a heavy, heavy investment in tech, that makes a lot of sense. So looking at the performance over the past five years, this is up 73%, which is really, really great. And all time, if you would have gotten in at the very, very beginning, which we all wish we would have, uh, it's up 274%, which is obviously incredible. And year to date, even with all of the tech difficulties, if you will, and all the uncertainty in the tech world, they are up 16% almost 17%, which is really, really solid. The next Vanguard fund we're gonna be looking at is VT Sachs, which is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund Admiral Shares. This one also has a $3,000 minimum investment, a pretty low expense ratio of 0.04%, and it also has a four on the risk to reward scale. So looking at the weighted shares, we have technology, which is a quarter of the overall portfolio, and then consumer discretionary coming in at 14.2, industrials 13.7 and healthcare at 13.6 and the top 10 holdings here again apple microsoft amazon tesla google you'll also see berkshire hathaway here exxon Mobil, and united health group and over the past five years as you would probably expect this has also been performing very well with a 48.81 percent total return and you probably would expect that based on the fact that the top 10 holdings are largely the same as the other two index funds that we've already talked about and then year to date as well this is up 6.72 percent so almost seven percent which is also looking pretty strong next is vnq which is the vanguard real estate etf and you'll notice that this isn't an index fund it does not have a three thousand dollar minimum investment here it has a little bit higher expense ratio of 0.12% and a risk to reward scale of four. So how this breaks down is 36.9, so almost 37% of the portfolio is specialized REITs. And then 14% is residential REITs, 
12.9% is retail REITs and 12.9% is industrial REITs. So what do the top 10 holdings look like here? These are probably companies you're not as familiar with as this is all real estate REIT type investments. So Prolongus, American Tower Corp, Equinix, and one of my favorites is Public Storage or PSA. And over the past five years, this has performed okay. Over the last five years, this has only gone up 10.35%, which isn't nearly as good as those other funds that we were looking at, but still 10% increase is pretty solid. And year to date, we are just about break even. The next Vanguard fund that I've invested in is VBK, Vanguard Small Cap Growth ETF, which also does not have a minimum buy-in here. It has a risk to reward scale that is higher than the others. This is a five risk to reward. And the expense ratio, uh, the fees here aren't terrible, but a little bit higher than what we've seen on the previous index funds. So looking at the weighted exposures here, we have healthcare coming in at just under 20% of the portfolio, industrials coming in at just under 20% of the portfolio, technology around 20%, 19.5% of the portfolio, and then consumer discretionary of 15.7%. So there's definitely four key market segments here and what that looks like in terms of the top 10 holdings is fico axon enterprise entrigris inc graco inc and a handful of others that i'm not as familiar with and could probably do a little more research on them so vbk over the past five years has gone up almost 28 percent and year to date is up just over six percent which is Pretty, pretty solid. So those are the five Vanguard index funds that I have been invested in for years. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if I were to do it all again, starting right now, I would probably think about it a little different. For example, VFIAX, which I think has performed exceptionally well over the past five years. If you remember, we see here the five-year investment is up 55%. And you need $3,000 to start being involved or being able to start playing with VFIAX. And it has an expense ratio that is pretty low of 0.04%. So you think, okay, well, you have to be able to save up and all of that before you can start investing in this fund. And then it's a large commitment. It's $3,000 all at once all going to VFIAX. But what you may have noticed on this website is it says it is also available as an ETF. So let's check that out. So when you click that link, it's going to take you to VOO, which is Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. And you'll notice first thing, there is no minimum investment. So you can get in for the price of one share, which is significantly lower than coming in for $3,000. The other thing you'll notice is that the expense ratio on VFIAX was 0.04 and the expense ratio here is 0.03, so there's a lower expense ratio. The other kind of funny and interesting thing is the 30-day SEC yield here is 1.59%, where if you remember, VFIAX was 1.58%, so it's very minimal, but the SEC yield is lower and has a higher expense ratio on VFIAX, and you also have to commit to a $3,000 minimum investment. So it's definitely easier to get started with VOO as an ETF. So let's see how they both have performed over the past five years and year to date. So here is VFIAX over the past five years. As we remember, it's up 55% or 54.35%. Now, if we go look at VOO, this is up 54.33%. So we're talking the exact same or virtually the exact same growth over the past five years. And then year to date, also up almost 8%. So it's much easier to get into VOO than VFIAX. The expenses are lower and the return is actually a little bit higher with the same overall results. So if I were to do this all again, and I could go back in time with some of the knowledge that I have now after starting this channel and just all the research that I've been doing, I would definitely have led with a VOO over VFIAX. And that's not all. Hold on one second. You'll notice that VIGAX, which also had the $3,000 minimum buy-in, has an ETF. And so does VTSAX, the $3,000 minimum buy-in. It says also available as an ETF starting at the price of one share. So if we click into this, you are going to see how you can get invested in the exact same fund 
but investing in it as an ETF rather than a proper index fund. You also notice that the expense ratio is still low and the risk to reward scale hasn't changed at all. Here's the other example that I haven't pulled up yet, but the Vanguard Growth ETF VUG has a very low expense ratio of 0.04%. The same, this is the exact same risk to reward. Anyway, you guys get it, but at this point, I would probably lead with investing in ETFs. And while I believe SCHD has all of the hype right now when it comes to ETFs, and it does seem like a very strong ETF that I am personally invested in, I'm grateful that I got invested in these funds years ago because I have been able to grow with them over time. And if there is any takeaway that you have from this video, if anything, and I am not the guru, this is one thing that I have learned over time as I have kept my money invested in the market, is to invest long term. Here, real quick, let me show you. Look at all of these charts right here. This is over the lifetime of VFIAX, up almost 200%. The lifetime of VIGAX, up 275%. Here is the lifetime of VT Sachs, up 223%. VNQ has had a little bit shorter lifetime but still up 61%. And VBK is up 330%. So the only concrete takeaway, if any, is that you need to invest your money in the market over a long period of time. So that way you don't have to worry about speed bumps when the tech economy is bad or you know as things aren't going your way or as the economy is looking scary, just know that over time, traditionally the US economy has always continued to grow. So if you're stressed out about the economy or don't know where to invest your money, just know that over time, things do look good generally, which isn't a rule, but historical data is a great way to look at how the market will perform over time. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. If you have any additional thoughts, uh, I'd also love to hear about those in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Uh, give this video a like, subscribe. Thank you. And have an incredible rest of your day. Take it easy. Peace.